Afternoon everyone. Today we're starting in a shop. Uh, we're in my shop because we got to switch out mowers. And this mower has not been started in about a month and it's about 25 degrees in the shop. because It's pretty cold outside. So we're going to do a cold start on it and it's going to idle or run a little bit above idle all the way till I get home that way it stays nice and uh, warm because it is like 24, 25 degrees outside and driving down the road is just going to cool it down super fast so I just want to keep it running and I don't even know if the battery is strong enough to start it because like I said I haven't been here in a month so uh, let's get it started. these underneath this uh, rail here because I cannot start this more without the seat being down and I can't have these cables jumper uh, leads here battery leads for the charger sitting there with the seat up or seat down so this way I can have the seat down and start it so let's plug this in and get her started here Okay, this is going to charge it for about 10 minutes, so let's see if it'll start. If it spins fast enough, it should start right up. Uh, switching all these uh, mowers around these two mowers, all these mowers, two mowers. I thought I'd check my cabinet see if I had an extra filter and enough oil, which uh, I did not have no, either one. So I had to go out to the dealership to get a filter and then stop at the parts store and get some oil. So uh, when I was out at the Skag dealership, it's also a steel uh, dealership too there. They don't have the BR800s in there yet, which they're supposed to be in next month, but uh, I'm not going to purchase anything halfway through winter. I'm going to wait till April or May before I buy anything. Uh, they also said that uh, Skag sent them a mower that I could possibly use in the spring. Because I had talked about it last year at the open house that they had with the Skag rep and uh, dealership there. So they had ordered a, actually it wasn't a dealership, it was Skag told them that they need to have that in their showroom because there was an interest in it. So it's going to be sitting there next month. And uh, it was kind of 
specifically directed towards me, but we'll see what happens with that. And because uh, I told him, I said I'm not ready to buy anything, and not till uh, we get through this winter. Because if we don't get any snow, there's not going to be much of anything being bought. Maybe one. Uh, we're actually going to buy the backpack bars. We have to have them. But I don't know about anything after that. So let's get the hydraulic filter and oil changed on this more. If you didn't watch my last video on a uh, hydraulic oil change, uh, this is how I go about this. First thing you have to do is uh, loosen up that plug, take that plug out, and drain the oil out of this reservoir. And there's going to be a few, little bit of oil in the lines, but you won't see much of that. And then Randy at Countryside Vlogs suggested I put a funnel below that to catch most of it to get the oil directed off of this. So that's what I'm going to do. And let's have a cheap drain pan on the bottom there. Hard part does, just break it loose and then try not to get oil all over yourself. I had to pick the funnel up because it was uh, starting to fill up because the oil is draining out in the pan. And the next thing I do is uh, pull that cap off so it drains out faster. And we just wait for it to drain out. Okay, so now that it's all done draining out and dripping and everything, put the plug back in because it's still going to drip a little bit and I just don't want to drip it on me. I guess I also should have mentioned you should inspect the O-ring that's on the bolt. forgot to mention that part. Now we're just going to tighten the plug up and uh, take the filter off. You want to tighten it up, you don't want to over tighten it. That's the part I don't like. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Some of you have been following the channel along for quite a while and I've gone through this before but uh, some of you haven't so that are no subscribers so I thank you for subscribing. Um, I use a genuine Skag filter for the hydraulic oil because uh, the Skag filter does not have a bypass in the filter like a regular automotive filter and what the bypass is is it's a spring and when the filter becomes plugged the spring will open up so the, the oil can bypass the filter itself and just keep circulating. Well, being a hydraulic system with valves and close tolerances, you do not want to have any sort of debris or shavings or dirt or whatever in your system at all. So I'd rather have the more quick moving because the hydraulic filter is plugged, which these are $24, $27, something like that, I can't remember exactly. but. Uh, it's real cheap compared to a pump or a wheel motor or anything like that. So that's what I use. So and then what I do is I fill this filter up full of oil so there is least amount of air in the system as possible. So uh, let's get this uh, filled up. And all I'm using is store brand 20 W50 motor oil or engine oil, whichever way you prefer to say it. This takes a little bit of a process because you got to wait for it to get through all the screens and everything. But so I'll speed that up a little bit right here.
And now that the filter is full, you got to make sure and get some oil on this gasket. With that uh, oil seal being lubricated, it helps seal it. It also helps when you want to take it back off again, which would be next fall. So the next hardest part is putting this on without seeing anything and not spilling it. Or cross-threading it. Next thing I do is I take the filter wrench and give it a quarter turn. And it is sealed and it will not come loose or drip any oil. Okay, so the next thing is we've got to fill this back up and it's, uh, the oil is supposed to be three inches below the top of this filler neck. So take the sleeve out that uh, prevents everything from sloshing around on you. And it should hold three quarts in there besides that partial quart that I put in that filter. measure that right now it's pretty close it's about two and three quarters of an inch but by the time I start this up and run around it should be at three inches So the manual says uh, you're, after changing the hydraulic oil and filter and everything, you're supposed to run the mower around or drive it around for uh, two and a half minutes. But um, there's not going to be too much air in there, so I'm just going to start out and get it spun around a couple times and uh, get it parked because uh, there's more stuff I want to do on it. But uh, I'm not going to be able to do that today because this video is already getting too long. So what's coming up next for this mower, i got to go through this thing all completely, it's uh, my oldest mower, there's uh, 1400 hours on it, so I am going to have to adjust the brakes on this, because uh, when you pull a brake or park, set the parking brakes and you're on a slope, it has a tendency of still creeping down, so I know the brakes are out of adjustment, so we're going to go through all that, the clutch needs to be adjusted, and I'm going to have to check for all loose nuts and bolts and everything else and uh, change blades again because I don't, you know, these are fairly good blades on here and come up in the spring with all the sticks and the stones and everything that got pushed all over everywhere from the plow. I don't want to have uh, brand new blades on there. I want to use my oldest blades. And uh, let's see, uh, what else do I want to do? Oh, the seat that I'm sitting on. Last summer, I took it all apart and put some high density foam in there. Well it works out okay, you know the foam's okay. It's not as soft or as firm as I wanted. I guess there's not enough padding as, uh, as I wanted. So I'm also going to be pulling that apart and add another four inches of high density foam to it. So uh, that is uh, what's coming up with this uh, more. It's going to be a little bit drawn out process and I'm going to go a little bit more detail on things I did, not like this uh, last one I did. 
So that is going to be the end of my video for today. I thank you for watching and subscribing. You can check out the links in the description box below. We'd greatly appreciate it. Everybody have a good evening, and we will see you on the next one.